So I've had a phone service for a long time that's a kind of a cheaper phone service. It works great, except when you add in all the extra features, it makes the cost quite high compared to some other solutions. So I thought I'd spin up my own free PBX server and then I would uh, attach my own analog telephone adapter for my own personal residential use. And so in this video, I'm gonna show you how I do that using the ATA adapter. In later videos, I can show you how I set up free PBX itself. This is just gonna cover the connecting connection and configuration of the Cisco uh, SPA122 ATA adapter. So let's get started. Okay, let's unbox this thing. My trusty unboxing knife here, which I don't need. I don't think I need it. All right. This is a Cisco ATA SPA. This is SPA 122, and it is an or analog telephone adapter. We put on our PBX system today. So what we have here is we have tension. Read that later. We have a quick start guide. Nothing fancy about that. And then we have the actual Cisco device. Let's take it out of its wrapper. Analog telephone adapter with a router, which I won't be using. Cisco emblem, indicator lights on here for two lines, plus the internet, plus power. And then we have a phone port, a second phone line port, an ethernet port, and we have an internet port. And then of course the power and the reset button. Let's, uh, let's remove this guy. Oh, no fancy way to remove it. That was less than thrilling. And then here's the power for it. Oh, interesting. What is this? Push. Oh, okay. So that was a little scary for a minute there. This actually has a universal Power plug, I guess it'll do 220 and yeah, if you can read that, good good for you, I sure can't. Anyway, it's probably 220 and 110. So they send you a, an American adapter, just slide it in there. And now you can just plug it into a, a US American based outlet. And if you want to switch it out to another country, I guess you just slide it out. But not today, huh? All right, well, there's the power adapter for it. And it comes with an ethernet cable because you can never have too many ethernet cables. That's it. That's all that's in the box. Let's go get this, let's go get this thing installed. All right, so this is plugged into my computer now and it's assigned an address from its local DHCP server to my network on my computer. And so let's go ahead and log in. We're gonna change the IP address on the server or on the device. Okay, so the first thing I want to do is I want to go to networking setup. And I've had some issues with this before. Leaving this in the NAT mode, it would not register with the PBX server. So I'm going to change this to bridge mode. Even though I'm uh, doing this on a local network, I'm just going to still use the bridge mode. And I'm not going to worry about this here. I'm going to submit that. It's going to reboot it. Okay, so after rebooting, I've got a, an address on my local network. And I'm logging in with that IP address. And the rest of the configuration is fairly simple. So what I'm going to need now is my proxy server address, which is my PBX server, my display name, which is my extension, or just the name I choose, then the user ID, which is the extension, and then the password. And we'll get all that from FreePBX. So we'll go to Applications, Extensions. And I'm gonna use the 4000 extension. 
and in this extension setting is a secret which I will use here and we'll use 4000 for the username we'll come back over here I know the proxy address of the PBX server so we'll put that in here display name I'll just put that or actually I'll just put this and then the user ID is the extension and then the secret is the secret that I chose for that and then I'll submit it and it's going to do another restart okay so the device has restarted now let's come over here to our free PBX server and check that it's logged in correctly so we'll go to asterisk info under reports and we'll click on peers and we will see that 4000 is indeed connected to the PBX server. And you'll also see that there is a green light on the extension number one, signifying that it is active. And then if we want to double check everything, we can go over here to voice. Click on line one. And we can come over to line one status and you can see here that its registration state is registered. And you can look at all this other information. So that's all there is to it. In another video, I can show you how I set up the free PBX server itself to be able to use this extension. Remember to like and subscribe, hit that bell icon so you're notified when I get new videos published. And thanks for watching.